Hey guys, it's Martin Miller here today again with a very special guest that you've seen on my channel before. It's the one, it's the only, Levi Clay. Give a round of applause. Woo! How's it going, dude? Pretty well, pretty well. So I, I summoned Levi <laughs> to have a little chat with him. Yeah, rumor has it that all you need to do is stand in front of a mirror in the dark and say my name three times and I appear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, thing is, what, what, what made me do this is that, you know, I wrote a, a masterclass on fretboard visualization a little while back. And the whole fretboard visualization thing has really become a bit of my pet peeve, a thing I talk about very much. Um, I would say, even, even, even though it's, it's kind of a 50-50 thing, I would say it's loosely based on the cage system, even though not entirely my method. And I've seen, and you have seen, the cage system have a, get a bit of a bad rap online for some reason by certain people who shall remain unnamed. Um, the thing I want to do today with you is, first of all, have a bit of an exchange as to how you do it, how I do sure. things, and also bust a few myths along the way. Sure. Especially uh, with the whole, like there has to, I, I see this thing happening where people sort of build religious camps uh, between the three note per string people and the caged people. Um, and we're just living in the middle, we're using them both. <laughs> yes, I use the term caged, but the truth is I don't use it in, a, in an ideo ideologistic or religious manner. I, I, some people think caged is a certain, a certain thing when I think it's something else, and I want to clear those things up a little bit. It, it sounds sure. more confusing than it is right now, but <laughs> yeah, let's clear this up. Um, what I mean when I talk about the caged system is that I divide the fretboard into five zones for anything I'm trying to visualize. That could be arpeggios, triads, pentatonics, scales, etc. All the kinds of devices that make up a piece of music or a guitar solo or whatever. Um, and those zones visually are referenced against our open chords. So I could be playing a C major triad here, 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 and so on. This is all that cage is for me, is that I use the open chord types as a visual reference for what I'm doing. So ultimately, my method really means, no, let's, let's put it differently. I, I support any fretboard visualization method that encourages to understand the function and the intervals of the notes that you're playing. So whatever method makes you aware that if this chord is lying underneath and you're playing this note above it, you're playing the major third of that chord. Any method, no matter what you call it and no matter how you lay out the notes on the fretboard, any method that supports that, I'm in support of basically. Yep. What do you say about that? Uh, I was going to get you to just play because uh, what you talk about there, like that, that's the point for me. It, it, it's a sensible way of doing things. And the thing that's worth addressing between you and I is we're not dogmatic about these things. Like no. the only, I feel the issue that we have with people that make content like this is not, it's not their opinions. Their opinions are fine. It's the way the opinions are dressed up. It's this is what I use. This thing that I don't use is bad. This thing <laughs> will harm your playing. And all of the cases that I can think of uh, that, that have that perspective, generally, not only do they not use this thing over here, it's also pretty clear they, they never have, they've never tried it, they don't really understand it. They've got something that works for them, which is fine. And then they say, this is bad. Like, I actually, if I'm completely honest, I kind of used to be that guy. I learned as a three note string player. And when mm -hmm. I went to university, um, they, I was told that I needed to learn and use the cage system and I kind of dug my heels in. No, 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 this is silly. I, I'm fine the way I play, thank yeah. you very much. And I had to eat some humble pie. It took me, university was good for that. It, it taught me to be a little bit less arrogant, only a little bit, obviously. Um, <laughs> a little bit less arrogant. And yeah, by the end of it, I had to kind of eat humble pie and go, you know what, actually there is, there's some value to this as a mm -hmm. system because it's everything that you talk about that there. It's that harmonic understanding of everything that I play. You can do that using the three note per string system. Yes, absolutely. 
Yeah, it's just generally speaking, I don't tend to see that from a whole lot of three note string guys. The arguments for three note string tend to be for visualization purposes, like it's quicker and easier. Um, it's it's easier to, to remember it and also you can play faster. That is not true because three note per string ob objectively per scale gives you seven things to learn with more notes in it to cover the entire fretboard. Yeah. Whereas Cage gives you five patterns to learn to cover all the notes on the fretboard and those patterns even have less notes in them. So yeah. as a matter of fact, Cage is less to learn. But the thing <laughs> is the biggest misconception, this is what's really bugging me, uh, the way people misrepresent or misunderstand the system. But I think a few of them might willfully misrepresent it. Cage does not dictate you when it's, when it's taught well, does not dictate you what to play, what finger to use on what string, what yeah. combinations of fingers to use, how to go along the fretboard. It does not teach you that. The only thing it does teach you is where are the notes that I'm looking for? Where yeah. is the fifth of the chord that I'm on? Where's the third of the chord that I'm on? Where's the seventh? Where's the ninth? And because it is related to those chords, just learning a triad in, in, in three note per string would be such an awkward thing. Whereas if you're in the A position of C major, you already got the triad mapped out for you pretty much. The only yeah. thing you have to add is this one note right here. There you go. Try it. And at the fifth down here, that's all there is to it. This makes it so simple to understand. And I, I talk about this in this video I've done with Tom. I play, I play a ton of stretches. I can, I can probably, when, when I edit this, I can whip up dozens of examples where I play stretchy fingerings. Some might yeah. call them three note per string. And the, the thing is though, I didn't, I try not to remember them as a hand shape. I just see, well, there's my root, there's my second, my fir third, my fourth, my sixth, my fourth, my fifth, my sixth. When I play those kind of sequences, I try yeah. to be aware of every note that I play in relation to either the key that I'm in or the chord that I'm playing against, depending on what, what type of music you're playing. I'm extremely fond of those stretchy positions. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna talk about my playing and your playing here because like, when it comes to this kind of discussion uh, and, and the detractors to what we're saying here, it's, it's shocking how consistently I can look at all of them and say, well, I mean, okay, so I use this system in my teaching and a lot of my playing as a visualization perspective, <laughs> um, I can pretty consistently play up and down the neck and over chord changes much better than you can. And I, I don't like bringing that point up because I'm a bad example. No one looks at me and goes, oh yeah, that Levi Clay, he's a respected guitar player. <laughs> I'm known for transcribing more than playing. I can play, check out my album. There's lots of shred on there. Lots of three note per string as well. Um, but yeah, Same. it seems baffling to me when you have these guys out there that are bitching about this, I just want to point at Martin Miller and be like, go look at Martin Miller, <laughs> go check his playing out. He plays using the cage system as his visualization perspective. Yes. And I he don't plays better play, than you'll ever hope to play. To make it simple, I don't play in caged, I think in caged. And yeah. I play whatever the music requires. Hmm. Because yes, three notes on the same string sound different than two notes and then one note on the, on the, on the next string, that, that, that sound different. So, in that case, my, my artistic preference will lead me to the decision as to where I place those notes. But even when I use stretchy patterns, etc., that's what I'm saying. My decision making when I choose notes is informed by the cage, by the cage system. This is where I have fun with it as a discussion though. So I'm gonna, I'll put you on the spot now and I'll mm -hmm. test you with something, right? And this is what I like to throw out of these metal guys. Cause it tends to be metal guys, which is the, the sad thing. Mm -hmm. It's that, that perspective of this is how I play and everyone should, should play like this. But I consistently see that they, they don't stick strictly to this idea of, well, we must play three notes per string. So I'll give you an example, right? Um, Martin, can you play me a C major scale, three notes per string, starting on the low E string? The low E string, yes, I can. Yes. So. Okay, great. That's something that metal players play, something that I play, and it's something that you play. Can you now play me um, a typical C major triad sweep arpeggio that you would play? In that same position, sorry. Uh, Around the root on the low E string. Uh. Okay, so pretty standard vocabulary that you just did there. 
you'll hear it in Jason Becker's playing, of course. Anyone that does that, that sweeping thing. Just play it again for us, one more time, nice and slow. Okay, so where, where was the, the highest root note that you played there? It was on the high E string. Okay, where does the root note sit when you play a three note per string scale? I mean, play me that three note per string scale one more time, but actually play, play the note C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G. Oh, you mean, yeah, you get this. You don't, you don't get that at all. You, you, you don't. play C on the low E string. The only the way you would note. get it is like this diagonal method. But that doesn't fit in that three note and string. And that is not, because of the... not really sweepable like that. Yeah. It, 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 pl try, and, try and actually do it the way that it should be. You play C on the low E string and E mm. on the low E string. So, what, sorry, what? You play C and E on the low E string. Then you play G on the A string. Mm. You then play C on the yeah. D string. And they go up like there. this. G would be there. And then the, your next C note would be on the B string, right? That's yeah. where it would sit within the three note string yeah. system. But we don't play that triangle. Uh, yeah, and what they use like is really the E shape of the cage system with this note extended and this note, ex ex uh, well, no, this note is not even extension. It's in the cage system and this yeah. note is a stretch extension, basically. Yeah. When you look at the way triads fall on the neck, this is kind of my, my base teaching for, for cage stuff, closed voice triads and how they cover the neck. There's only 12 voicings that we can play on the guitar of a closed voice triad. That's all there is. And they fit so perfectly within these within these systems. I'd, I'd kind of like to have a 100 string guitar made up because what you find is if you start your triad, I'm trying to get my hand on screen here. I could have a guitar really, couldn't I? Um, as you start on the, the top three strings and start moving down strings, you will move diagonally across the neck as you do it like this and you just transition through each one of these shapes. It's, it's beautiful and undeniable neck geometry. Yeah. And it's it's what metal players use. When we and I say we because you know I love playing metal. Look around me. I've got a beautiful comparison. There's a Dingwall five string bass there. <laughs> Some Vigier guitars. All right. There's a wanky country guitar and a jazz guitar. But I have metal albums out. Like I love playing metal. We love playing metal. I wouldn't sweep using anything other than triadic. Well, for triadic arpeggios, those three basic inversion patterns that yeah, yeah. people have been doing since the late 70s early 80s and yeah it's every single one of them is either the e shape of caged the c shape of caged or the a shape of caged you can argue with it all day doesn't mean that you're ever going to be right you know that's an indisputable fact <laughs> that's just what exists so mm -hmm. to argue with it is seems a bit ridiculous to me the way yeah. i put it and I'll, I'll throw this as a question to you like for the argument of cage to be useless to be a correct argument then what you need to be able to say is if you learn the cage system, if you never look at three notes or anything else, you only learn the cage system, I have a product, come and buy my product, don't go to cage teachers. If you learn the cage system, you will never learn anything of use. It will hamper you. But then I'd say, well, hang on a minute. If you learn the cage system, you are going to learn arpeggios that are sweepable. You are going to learn the pentatonic scales because as much as people want to argue with it, every one of those five pentatonic scales that we play is a minor caged position. <laughs> it's undeniable and again. <laughs> whether it's caged or not, they, 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 when you have good fretboard vis visualization, meaning that you're always aware of what note you're on in relation to yeah. the chord, I keep repeating that, then you can play, you can go anywhere on the neck, or wherever you please. Yeah. You just, you just yeah. come, you could just combine the notes on the fly. Yeah. You don't have to, no, that, you have to the, the play thing, in pre, like... uh, pre, in pre-written patterns. I mean, who does that? And there's also there's always the argument, yeah, three note per string is mechanically so much easier to play. And this is a point that drives me up the wall, quite frankly, because the solution that they propose is, oh, well, let's make it easier for us by putting three notes on every string. My proposition would be, how about you learn to play two notes on a string when they occur? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you dodge the problem instead of addressing it? Oh, here's an even even better issue that you'd that you'd raise with that. What if you want to play music that isn't just ascending scales really fast? I know this is alien to a lot of people. I know like all these kids today, they love listening to the music that's just scales going up and down, up and down, up and down. Mm. But what if you don't want to do that? What do you do then? Your technique hasn't got you prepared for what you need to play in the real world. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, absolutely. And, and that even when you play certain sequences in the three note per string system, which is ironic, it won't be three notes per string. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you play but certain lines, they might be one note per string, but it, it just falls up the whole idea that, yeah, the directional picking doesn't work or the alternate picking is inconsistent. It falls apart as soon as you play anything besides up and yeah. down a scale. And do you know what isn't inconsistent? The picking in the cage system. Because as much as you want to sit and say that, oh, well, when you play three note string, all of your mechanical changes are exactly the same from, from pattern to pattern. And I'd say, yep, yeah, you are absolutely right there. But when you play the cage system, your picking is still consistent. It's still down, up, down, up, down, up. No matter what you do, down, up, down, yeah. up, down, And there's two up. possibilities. You either cross a string on an upstroke or you cross the string on a downstroke. Same thing with three notes per string. You either cross yeah. on a downstroke or you cross <laughs> on an upstroke. I, 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 I feel we're getting into dangerous territory here though because you're gonna get lampooned as the guy that just, you teach cage and you are a cage guy. I've fallen into that trap and it needs to be said that like, I'm not a caged guy. Actually, when I play, it's my, kind of my perspective of visualization, but I'm, if anything, the worst thing about my playing is that I'm, I move around too damn much because I feel that it, I enjoy that. I like moving around a lot when I play. I don't feel that I'm stuck in any boxes. And actually when I really analyze what I'm doing when I'm playing, it's not really caged. If I could teach what's going on in my head, like I learned so much from Two, two main guys were like the big influences and in the game changers for my fretboard visualization. It was Carver Hayne and Wayne Krantz. Neither of whom are cage players, really, in the grand scheme of things. Again, there's that, you can see the uh, triadic patterns in, in what I don't played. think there's any caged player in the world. Be because, again, this is something that people don't understand. P caged is a thought process, mm. not a playing prescription. It's it's not it's not it's not putting you in a cage as critic, critics like to say because it doesn't it, it if if it's taught properly it'll it'll allow you to do whatever yeah and that's where the dick measuring thing comes out because when I hear that from people oh you play cage you must be stuck in a cage I want to do the open Skype challenge I want to throw out this challenge to people and go you want to find the holes in my fretboard knowledge cool let's get on Skype good luck. You ain't gonna find them. I can move up and down the fretboard playing over whatever changes you like. I'm around, don't play the best vocabulary over it. I'll leave that to better players. But the point is my visualization is extremely strong. Whereas I know like these guys, I can say, right, move your hand up and down the neck, just like this. And I'll say, stop. And right, we're here, cool. Uh, play G sharp minor seven flat five. No, no, not just the arpeggio, like play vocabulary over that chord where your hand is. And, and they'll go, what? I need to go down to the fourth fret to find my G sharp, and then I need to remember what a minus seven flat five arpeggio is, and then one at a time I need to move up position at a time to to get to the ninth. Fret. Not even vocabulary. Just... just just go. Yeah, play the flat fifth. Okay, now play the flat seventh. Okay, yeah. now play the natural nine. Now do that yeah. in two octaves, please. Two different octaves. It'll it'll fall apart. The world will fall apart as because they only know. Let's say it go back going back to C major. They only know this note because they know the note before that, the note before that, the note before that, and the note before that. Yeah. They never specifically seem to target certain notes. So the whole idea of, yeah, it makes you play up and down a scale more easily. It's, it's just such a non-issue because you never play up and, up and down scales other than in practice. So what I would rather get my, my students to do nowadays is to get into a cage position and play me all the thirds. So that's all the thirds I can think, think of in the A position. Let's move on to the G position. Play me all the thirds. There you go. E position, play me all the thirds. We could argue that this is in the cage, or maybe not, doesn't matter, and so on. You go through the fretboard, you find all the thirds that are in the system. Um, and that leads you down a much more healthy path where you start choosing notes deliberately because you like their sound and not because they happen to be at your fingertips in that very moment. Yeah. Yeah, and so <laughs> I, I don't know if you even saw it actually, just recently I uploaded a, a video listing off my top five favorite instrumental albums that you need to check out. Um, and I, I put your instrumental album- Oh damn it, I haven't because... seen it. <laughs> well, I've had it on in the car recently. I just kind of reminded what a great album it is and, and uh, you know, how, how people should 
check it out if they're unaware of it. Um, and there are so many tracks on it that I could obviously recommend, but um, one of the tracks that I recommend is, is the opener, Nervous Opus. Um, and I love that as, a, as an example of what we're talking about here, because the, the solo section in it is just you playing over two minor seven chords and minor third part, right? No, that's that's the the verse. Oh, okay. The solo you section solo over is a section where there are minor yeah. seven chords and minor third apart. Um, and yeah, that when you talk about everything you've done there, where you know play play the thirds, that's what I need when I'm when I'm playing around the neck, especially when I'm playing fast. If I'm playing around the neck on an A minor seven chord, and I start here and I, I get up the neck, and the, that C minor seven chord is coming. I can't go, right, I need to get back down to that eighth fret to find where C minor is. I need to be able to change to that C minor fluently wherever I am on the neck. And voice leading is very important to me in the way that I create and improvise my lines. So I want that to be as smooth a movement as possible. So I want to transition to the third of the chord or the seventh of the chord. Like there's no, in my mind, there's no other option because, you know, it's, music is painting by numbers to me. That's Maybe yep. that's why no one likes my music. <laughs> I, sh I should fix that. But you know what I mean? Like that, that freedom to play over chord changes rather than... Because we all know what it's like. I, I see it with actually even students of mine that have a caged perspective. Even then, it's uh, when they're talking pentatonic scales, if I say, let's play A minor 7 shape 3, or the C shape, they have to get to shape 1 and then work out where shape 3 is. And to me, that, that entire mentality is just, again, it misses the point of what this perspective that you and I are talking about is. I should, no matter where I am, I should be able to see a given root note. And then as soon as I can yeah. see that given root note, every other 12... Of they they 12 align just around appears. it. They align around it. Yeah. Yeah, I had a student today who, who knew the pentatonic uh, in five positions. So he said as I, he was doing an introductory lesson. Uh, and I asked him, yeah, well, play me, play me C, the C major pentatonic down here. And he had to start calculating like, yeah. like which, which, which number is it? Which, which number of pattern? And this may seem like a very small thing to, to certain instruct. Now he's going for it. <laughs> <laughs> now that this may seem like a very small thing for a lot of instructors where they go, yeah, well, what's the problem? But for me, my alarm bells went off. Is that this this little thing is a symptom for something that is much more fundamentally rooted? Yeah. Um, meaning that he should be able to see that there's a C down here, and whether you learned that shape by heart or not, you just just there's there's this combination of of knowing and understanding. So you have to you have to know that the pentatonic is made up of the steps one, two, three five, six. And then you have to understand where those notes on the fretboard are. And then you can just make that pattern up as you go. You can go one, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, five, six. I broke the cage system here. I went up on one string. I can still find all the notes confidently. Yep. My, uh, the, <laughs> I really should be plugged in for this, but you know, it's, uh... no, it's not louder than me. Problem solved. Um, my my perspective on that, I talk about this a uh, lot in, I forget which one of my books. I have a lot of them now, apparently. I like to build things one on top of the other. Simple information, a bit more on top, and you just keep going. So my perspective is I, I'll take, I talked about them earlier, those closed voice C triads that are just ingrained into my playing. I don't think about them at all. It's, if I can see this around that A shape, then wait, wait, I, can... wait, I have to move the window here because people won't be able to see it. Try it again. Okay. <laughs> so as long as I can see that uh, basic C shape, um, oh, well, it's C chord, sorry, A shape. Um, as long as I can see that, then as you pointed out, all of those intervals live around that. But my perspective is more, I never lose track of my arpeggio. So, Which is the same can... as never losing track of your, yeah. of your chord shape. And then on to, uh, what, but the point is, like you've, we can see our root notes. If I can see my root notes, then it doesn't take much more effort for me to be able to see my chord. And if I can see my chord, then it's only one more step for me to be able to see that triad arpeggio. And then it's only one more step for me to be able to, instead of play, to fill that in with. Yeah. And then... You know what's kind of funny? 
whatever it is I happen to play. A lot of people learn to, to memorize notes by learning these octave shapes. And I, I'm, I'm not a friend of that because you should, you should know where every note is just like that, not by using a mm. crutch. But what's very interesting about this is that they learn a, a shape to reference an interval. And even if that interval is the same thing, it's still referencing an interval visually. And the same thing they just have to learn with, to do with all the other intervals. So instead of just learning that this is an octave to find your notes on the top strings, you, can, you might as well learn that this is a third. Yeah. And this is a third. And this is a third. And this is a third. It's basically the, 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 the process is the same. Yeah. Yeah, everything is um, about, well, we're just beating a dead horse at this point, mm. about harmony. Everything is about harmony. One of the um, arguments that I've seen to be thrown up at me, and you've kind of addressed this when you said when you play cage, you don't have to, you're not limited to playing with certain fingers. You know, you do whatever you want to do uh, in music. The argument I've, I've seen is like, well, how do you play a major scale starting on your first finger? Like, like that matters. Like, I'll tell you what, instead of doing this, I'll go. D did it sound different? No, of course not. Or I can, I, I can, I can one up you. I can go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and, but the it's a good, it's a good position I, shift exercise. I'll always throw this counter back because this is like a huge part of the way I play now. I say, cool. Uh, even, even if you were right, right? You play, you play major scale like this. How do you play a major third? when you start on your first finger, harmonically. Yeah. That's a big part of the way I play now. Yeah. Always thinking in double stops, like, and, and thank you, Scotty Anderson. I can't play a third like as harmonic information and actually to me it's it's more useful to be able to play those notes as at the same time than it is to be able to play them doesn't mean that i won't oh shit i, I played some stretched notes there i've broken the cage system oh, everything i've out. said is clearly no, alive this is, this is something i want to advise people if caged as a visual, visualization method great if somebody tells you you're gonna to have to stick to those patterns in all that you play. That is a red flag and you should move away from that. That doesn't mean that cage is a crap system. It just means that it's taught badly. That's all there really yeah. is to it. Is there, is there a thing, is there such a thing as bad information? Yes, but can you, can you be hurt by learning things? You know, the wisest of people can be presented with the worst of ideas and that's not a problem because they're smart enough to know why they're bad ideas. That's why actually our industry is- No, you know, no, I disagree, side I disagree. I, 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 when I learned how to sing, and I'm still learning how to sing, obviously, yeah. but when I learned how to sing, I came across information that ultimately maybe didn't really hurt. It can hurt you in the long run if you do certain things incorrectly, yes. So I would say, yes, it is harmful to learn certain things, especially if you're not in a position where you can make a judgment whether something is harmful or not. Yeah, that, that was the point I was, I was trying to make oh, sorry, there yeah. afterwards, where, where I say like, where I say the wisest of people can learn anything and, and put aside oh, the yeah, information I, I because they're mean, very yes. wise. But that's kind of why our industry is, is quite, the teaching side of our industry is a dangerous one because we, we don't teach wise people. We teach people that need guidance. And that's where I've fallen foul on YouTube by you know, implying that it can be quite predatory because consistently, any time that I see someone ripping on a system, ripping on saying that's bad, the reason they're doing it is usually because they want to. They've got something that they can sell you. You know, here, here's my thing. That thing that your guitar teacher told you is bad, but here's my product. And the, the thing is, the thing is, if you were conf confident enough that your method would work, there would be absolutely no need to rip in some into somebody else's method. Uh, you just would let the, the playing do the talking. I mean, we're not specifically ripping into somebody else's method. We're just, we're just trying to, we're just trying to encourage people to not fall into the, the traps of believing people who down talk yeah. certain things without, without reason. 
I, the, the entire point of my YouTube channel, and if anyone hasn't seen it, go and check it out. It's the best channel on YouTube, so I've been told by my parents. Um, is the, the entire point of it is in just encouraging people to think more critically about everything, everything that they learn. Um, and I, gonna... I, I, I want to say this. I encourage people to challenge my methods too. Yeah. If, if somebody presents me an idea that is better than mine, I won't get all defensive and go, no, this is wrong. My method is the right way. My way is the only way. I'll be grateful. I'll invite that person to have to sit down and have a beer with me, discuss it, and then yeah. adapt my uh, adapt what I'm doing and what I'm thinking, because it's it's I, I'm, I'm happy about that. If somebody improves what I'm doing, I, I'm more than happy about it, and I'll be the first to put up my hand to say that I was wrong. <laughs> and we, we have a, a long history as uh, friends and and as teachers, and the, there's a testament to everything you've said there. Over the years, you have pushed a reasonable amount of your students in my direction, and I've pushed a reasonable amount of students in your direction, because not because I want to. I'm saying to my students, "Well, there's nothing more I can show to you. You need to go to Martin," but because good information is good information. I know that I present my students with good information, and therefore I'm not terrified of other good guitar teachers. If anything, I want them to go to you. I want. I, great for them to go to you because you're just going to reinforce everything that I showed them and they're going to see all of the same things from a different perspective from someone that can play really well um, that that helps you should never be scared of your of your uh, peers your teachers and again if you have a guitar teacher that seems to be terrified of of you learning reading books or seeing other teachers like alarm bells ring for me when that happens and we the reason I say this is because we've both had it, haven't we? We've both, you and I both have students that are extremely high level players, successful players that have gone on to Berkeley and now playing all over the world. Like our students speak for, speak for themselves. We've taught a lot of people, but we've also had that student usually once a month where we start the lesson, do a bit of playing, do a bit of talking. And then you say to them, right, so let's talk about the cage system. Or this, I refer to this as the A shape of the cage system when I'm playing an arpeggio or whatever, and you just see them die inside. Yeah. There's that look that in their eyes never, of. Honestly, that has never happened to me. No. I think I'm, I'm such a caged. I'm considered such a caged whore that those those people would just stay away from me. I'm considered a caged whore, apparently, but yeah, I, I see it consistently that you see that look in people's faces. No, oh, never happens. I've never. heard about this cage system. Oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, well, I'm surprised that you've never had that. That's kind of ruined that little thing. Thanks, Martin. You could have just played along. <laughs> I'm going to edit that clip because that's that's what I wanted. You, but you're totally right. And again, like Guthrie Govan oh, talks about the cage system, doesn't he? Joe Pass talks about the cage system. Albert Lee, and this is the one that I love the most because this really opens up the doors. Albert Lee, he doesn't talk about the cage system, never. But he very clearly demonstrates it. He very clearly he talks demonstrates about playing like, lines around oh, chord I play shapes. around this chord I said shape. In, a, in a one on one lesson that my girlfriend had with Tim Miller, who's one of the greatest jazz fusion guitarists alive. Yep. He told her just what I told you before. You want to find your triad here? Just think of this, think of this chord and add this note in there. There you go. Yeah. You will see it consistently with some of the greatest players that our instrument has ever known. They don't use the word cage, and that's fine. They I don't have to. I don't feel that's the need how to they sit learn, down and, that's, and, that's and great. explain why that's caged. But the thing that is consistent with all of them is that they're constantly aware of what notes they're choosing. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than being limited to the notes that exist within your, your given shape. So, yeah. I don't really know what else to say, if I'm honest. Nah. We're, we're too... This is way too much agreement for this video. I want a drama. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do drama right now too much. Um, yeah. yeah. No, nothing to be said on that right now. Yeah. No drama let's for wrap, a while, people. Let's, let's wrap it up. I think there was some, some good stuff in there for people, for people to check out and think about. Don't take our words for it. Research. Check it out. Check out other methods. Don't, don't buy mine if you want, if you're interested in it, if, if you think it's going to help you. I think it might. But I'm also saying check out other methods, compare, draw your conclusions. And I'll be here... Happy to discuss it with anybody who, who uh, has anything to bring to the table that exposes my methods as being false. Well, I, I will actually just throw one more one more thing into the equation, which um, I'm going to reach over and grab a guitar over here because this is important. Well, 
What am I getting Ta-da. myself into here? Ta-da! So no one's going to hear it, but that's absolutely fine because it's not about me playing. Um, this is my this is my open E guitar. Uh-huh. I play this guitar in open E, and I've only really uh, become quite proficient in open E in the last year or so. I've been playing in open E for a good few years now, but the thing that really helped me get proficient in open E was taking across that that cage perspective, mm-hmm. not where's my E shape, where's my A shape. Where's, so on and so forth but just being able to think here's a triad here's a triad and here's a triad and as long as I can see those triad forms then, then around you, those then you know the seventh is just a note away I can see my triad and yeah you, you'll just I've know that when, again, you, when, when you get your root note you'll know that there's a ninth above and a seventh below yeah and uh, it's not really caged at all. That's that's my doorbell. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god. You keep talking and somehow you'll cut to your camera. <laughs> wasn't supposed to get here till nine o'clock and my shopping's turned up. Uh-huh. Were you talking? Have you worked no. out a way that you can cut just, that? Pretend that didn't noodling. happen? Just been noodling. Okay. Um, cool. Where were how, we? how do you want to end that? Have you got a way that you can end it? Uh, yeah, I, I was kind of wrapping it up as, a, as a, before, before your dogs caused mayhem. Um, I, was, I was saying that I'm happy to get my ideas challenged, get into a discussion. I'm also happy to accept that somebody else's solution is better than mine. And if somebody isn't, then that's usually a red flag, isn't it? Yes. (laughs) Bye bye. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, everything you said there makes sense. Um, Though I would point out that isn't, isn't that why we're having this discussion? Because people have challenged your ideas and they have challenged my ideas but they're just not willing to have like a one-on-one discussion with you. Well, I've never aggressively pursued that, but if one of those people who claim that my methods are bullshit or my methods um, limit creativity, th- those types of things, or they slow down your progress, if, if, if they were want, willing to discuss it in a, in, a decent, in a decent manner, in a respectful manner, I'd be all up for it. This could be very promising because while I have offered the exact same thing to many people over the years, no one will ever take me up on it because they think I'm just going to get on camera and scream at them. <laughs> but people should take Martin up on that because, yeah, it's, uh, you know, Martin is a world caliber player. Anyone watching this that has the opportunity to discuss education with him, uh, you can only learn from it. You can only become a better player, more rounded musician from it. So, if you can challenge his ideas, then do it. Yeah. It's good. You're either going to teach him something or you're going to learn something. Both of those are good outcomes. Mm-hmm. I'd be happy to, 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 to get, get enlightened a little bit, for sure. Yeah. Makes me a better teacher. <laughs> makes me a better musician. I'm up all, all for it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Good. Um, let's wrap this up by saying uh, you have a YouTube channel. How can, you, how can they find you? I have a YouTube channel, it's just called Levi Clay. I upload lots of videos, me transcribing lots of stuff, me talking about stuff, teaching stuff, just trying to make you think a bit more critically and to help you develop your ears. So go and check it out. I post, I don't know, usually about five videos a week, but I've been pretty quiet recently, but I will get back on it. So you also thank got you books. so much for all the support, guys. And, you also uh, got yeah. some books out, right? I do, I have uh, five books, five uh, four Amazon bestsellers, all available on Amazon. If you just type in Levi Clay, they're all country music books. Country music, sorry, country guitar for beginners, uh, the country finger style method, country guitar finger style method, 
uh, 100 country licks for guitar and country guitar soloing techniques. And there's also a beautiful compilation book that contains three of those books in one. I started. I stopped listening 30 seconds ago. But. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I'm just joking. Levi is a great guy, great teacher, great player. Go check out his stuff. I, I, uh, it's always, always a pleasure to talk to him, and hope to have him again, again on here very soon. I'll see you folks around. Bye bye. <laughs>Guitar player, and thank you for checking out my brand new improvisation masterclass volume one fretboard visualization and triads available right now at gemtrackcentral.com. So, if you want to take your improvisation to the next level, head on over to gemtrackcentral.com and download your copy right now.